What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the new 2021 Hyundai Tucson courtesy of Jack G and Volvo Hyundai in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. I do review this one every single year and I do enjoy reviewing it and it's one that I always like to review because of course Hyundai does offer America's best warranty being five years, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper, 10 year, 100,000 mile on the powertrain side of things. Also starting February of 2020, Hyundai now gives you three years, 36,000 mile of free complimentary maintenance. That's a pretty good deal as well and i saw that jack and bavo got the top trim level and so i wanted to check it out today so what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2021 tucson first one being the se starting at twenty three thousand seven hundred dollars which by the way is a modest 150 dollar increase over the 2020 model year value trim level starting at 25,100 there is the SEL for 27,240 sport for 28,200 limited for $30,540 and lastly the ultimate starting at $33,190 and so in case you were curious that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration if you wanted to add all wheel drive to any of those trims simply add $1400 to any of those prices and so as you can imagine, with all of those trim levels, there are also a couple different engine configurations available for this one. First one being a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder belonging to the SE and value trim levels. This one puts out 161 horsepower at 6,200 RPM, 150 pound feet of torque available at 4,700 RPM, power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a six speed automatic, giving you MPG numbers coming in at approximately 23 in the city, 28 highway for the front wheel drive 22 city 25 on the highway for the all-wheel drive configuration but either way taking regular unleaded fuel saving a little bit of money there that's always nice but so then the other engine configuration belonging to the sel limited and ultimate trims being the 2.4 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder this one puts out 181 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 175 pound feet of torque available at 4,000 rpm once again sent to front wheels or all wheels through a six-speed automatic zero to 60 times on this one comes in at approximately 8.8 .8 seconds mpg numbers 22 city 28 highway for the front wheel drive 21 city 26 on the highway for the all-wheel drive really not that much of a difference when it comes to mpgs between the two engine configurations so i did want to mention that once again though taking regular unleaded fuel but so then before we do any kind of fun acceleration test in the tucson i did want to mention there are drive modes for the 2021 tucson that button is located just behind the shifter and that is going to include normal and sport essentially what they are going to do is adjust things like the throttle response shift points and actually the steering sensor as well so let's go ahead and put it in sport here and it did immediately downshift for me so it is going to hold the rpms in a much higher level giving you more power on demand and there is a slight adjustment to the steering sensitivity nothing too drastic of course but it is a slight adjustment there i could tell that as well but now having said that let's go ahead and do an acceleration test there are no paddle shifters i wanted to mention that as well this isn't a sports car you really don't need them so let's just go ahead and find a straightaway here and let's see how quickly we can get the new 2021 hyundai tucson here up the speed. There we go. Yeah. It's actually not bad. I mean, it's not the quickest thing in the world. There are faster SUVs, even the Hyundai Santa Fe. If you want a little more power, you can go with that one. But it's actually not bad, especially since we have the upgraded engine. We do have the very top trim level, so you're not going to have any issues merging onto the highway or anything like that. So actually kind of surprised. It's really not that bad of an acceleration for what the Tucson is, I should say. But to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so to start up front you will find 12 inch ventilated front discs in the back 11.9 inch solid rear discs as far as that 60 to 0 stopping distance goes it's actually not that bad it comes in at 118 feet which is kind of impressive for an SUV. A lot of the SUVs I've been testing lately, they're at least in the 120s, some of them even in the 130s. So 118 feet, 60 to zero is really good actually. So and as far as the braking feel goes, it's perfectly fine. Traditionally, Hyundai is a little softer of a braking feel, but honestly, I think the Tucson is a good blend of soft and firm. Essentially what I'm saying is the braking feel feels really good in the Tucson, so no issues there. Touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension, in the back, independent multi 
multi-link rear suspension, front and rear gas pressurized shock absorbers, as well as front and rear stabilizer bars. And overall, as far as ride quality goes, it's pretty much as expected. It's certainly not a bad ride, I will say that. It's soaking up Pennsylvania's road imperfections quite nicely, so really no issues for me there. As far as the steering feel goes, that's something that I would personally improve on the Tucson, and I know the 2022 model is going to be the redesign, but that is maybe something if I were Hyundai, I would approve just ever so slightly. Use the Mazda CX-5 for a good example on the steering feel. It is a little bit looser, I will say that, so it's not as much feedback as I personally would want, even in sport driving mode, because it's just a slight difference from the normal driving mode, so wouldn't have minded a little heavier weighted steering feel, but again, it's pretty much as expected for the Tucson. As far as cabin noise goes, as I am sitting at a red light going absolutely nowhere, of course, you're not going to hear it right now, but cabin noise is pretty much as expected. Once again, you do get a little bit of road noise when you hit higher speeds, but other than that, it's pretty much as expected once again for the Tucson. And touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back, so certainly no issues there. I did want to also mention, though, the ultimate trim level that we have here today also gets rain sensing windshield wipers. So that's pretty cool. That essentially means the windshield wipers will turn on automatically for you whenever the Tucson detects any kind of rainfall or even mist. So it's one last thing you gotta worry about, kind of like automatic headlights. So that's gonna assist with visibility as well. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2021 Hyundai Tucson. All right, so here she is, you guys, the 2021 Hyundai Tucson. As far as what's new for 2021, really not all that much on the exterior. There is one color delete being sage brown, no longer available for 2021, and three new colors being Coliseum gray, black nor pearl, and gemstone red, in case anybody was curious. But let's go ahead now and start up front on the 2021 Tucson here. Large front grille with horizontal chrome slats coming standard. We'll actually get chrome grille surrounds with with the limited and the ultimate trim levels if you wanted that. Projector headlights coming with the SE value and SEL trim levels. They do of course come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, they will turn on automatically for you there. LED accent lighting coming with the value trim level and up. LED headlights coming with the sport trim level and up. And if you did go with that sport and up, you're actually also going to get LED daytime running lights and front fog lights down below as well so i think the sports from leveling up is really the sweet spot with the tucson in my opinion but let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the tucson here roof rails coming with the value trim leveling up rear privacy glass for all trim levels that's always nice black window surrounds on all trim levels but the limited and the ultimate because of course you were looking at chrome window surrounds right now and those chrome window surrounds will tie together with the chrome door handles again for the limited and ultimate trims as well they take a look at the side mirrors they are power adjustable body colored side mirrors for all trim levels heated side mirrors for the value trim level and up and you will get integrated turn signals if you were to go with the limited or ultimate trim levels then so then taking a look down at the wheel setup of the tucson 17 inch alloys coming with the se and the value trim level 18 inch alloys coming with the SEL limited and ultimate therefore what you were looking at right now and then the sports trim level actually ups that one inch yet again to 19 inch alloy wheel so we'll say that with the sport trim level having larger wheels you can expect a little bit firmer of a ride there in case anybody was wondering but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the Tucson here and so up top you will find a shark fin antenna that is the first thing I always like to mention just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper LED taillights coming with the sport trim level and up once again, and that is what you are looking at right now. And I like the taillight design to the Tucson, it looks pretty good. Then if you guys can see the H-Track logo found in the bottom right-hand corner of that rear tailgate, for anybody who is not familiar with H-Track, that is Hyundai and Genesis's all-wheel drive system because every manufacturer has to label their all-wheel drive system. Just like Audi named theirs Quattro, Mercedes names theirs Formatic, and so on. So Hyundai and Genesis is H-Track track in case you were curious but then taking a look down below single exhaust outlet with the se and value trim levels and you will get dual tips if you were to go with the sel trim level and up so therefore do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So 
it been now since we are around back of the Tucson. When it comes to opening that rear lift gate, there is a button on the key fob itself. It is going to unlock it for all trim levels until you get to the Sport. Sport trim level and up is actually going to give you a hands-free power lift gate. So it is going to open up automatically once you hit that trim level. And again, hands-free, meaning simply walk up to the back of the Tucson and kick your foot underneath. And it is going to open up automatically if your hands are full, for example. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 31 cubic feet even. If that was not enough space, those rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 61.9 cubic feet. There's actually some in-floor storage back there as well, which I always love to see. 12 volt power outlet in the cargo area too. Cargo lighting, of course, as expected. And in case anybody was curious, because I tend to get this comment from time to time on Tucson reviews, the Santa Fe is going to be slightly bigger, so a little more cargo space if you were comparing those two at least. So then making our way to the rear leg room, that comes in at 38.2 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Plenty of space for me, quite honestly. Rear center armrest with cup holders comes standard on all trim levels. That actually doesn't always happen. Sometimes just comes standard on the upper trim levels of other manufacturers, so that was nice. And you will have AC vents or rear ventilation if you were to go with the SEL trim level and up. That is what you guys are looking at right now. Heated rear seats coming with the ultimate. That is pretty darn cool. Love to see heated rear seats, especially at this price point in an SUV. So spoil the rear passengers a little bit. I love that. And in case anybody was curious where those heated rear seat buttons are, a lot of times they're right below the rear ventilation, but on the Tucson, they're actually found just in front of the power windows for those rear passengers. So a little bit different configuration there. So I wanted to mention that too. And just below that rear ventilation, you actually, it looks like a 12 volt power outlet but it's actually a usb charging port for the rear passengers which of course is better in my opinion so love that but anyways let's go ahead now and make our way to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the se trim level value trim is going to add to that eight-way power driver seat with power lumbar as well as heated front seats Limited trim then is going to add leather surfaces as well as an eight-way power adjustable passenger seat. And then the ultimate that we have today does add ventilated front seats as well for hotter days in Pennsylvania, kind of like today. But taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the sport trim level and up, and it is heated for the limited and ultimate trim levels. Love that because it does snow quite often here in PA. So having a heated steering wheel is definitely going to be a good thing then. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Hyundai logo on the one side. It is blocked by this little orange sticker. So I'm gonna leave it there though. On the other side, lock, unlock, and that button to pop the rear hatch. And it is all keyless entry with a push button start if you were to go with the value trim level and up. That is how you're gonna be able to get that. So simply just leave the key in your pocket, walk up to the Tucson. There is a push button start located just by the driver's right knee. So I'm just gonna simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button there. And so, but then once started up, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a small digital display front and center giving you all the information you basically would possibly need, including things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's your outside temperature as well. You can also choose to display a digital speedometer up there if you wanted as well. Of course, you got your standard trip A, trip B, when you need your next oil change actually, and there's plenty of other information you could check out up there as well. They make our way to overall interior quality. My favorite part about this particular Tucson, at least, panoramic sunroof coming only with the ultimate trim level, of course, since we have it. Love that, and it goes well into the back. Rear passengers have their perfect view of the sky as well. One of the larger panoramic sunroofs that I've seen in a while, actually. Wireless phone charger coming with the sport trim level and up. That's going to be located just in front of the shifter. And it's actually a decent size as well. So if you have a bigger phone, you should be just fine there. Dual zone climate control coming with the SEL trim level and up, meaning both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures. As far as overall interior quality goes, I love the two color contrast that we have here. Just above the passenger side glove box, you have a leather finish with some gray stitching running through it as well. Just in front of the shifter, you actually have two 12 volt power outlets, USB speed charging port and auxiliary port just to the right of the shifter you have a little bit of storage area and then your dual cup holders of course and just behind all of that within the center armrest there you have a decent amount of storage there and a little tray up top that is removable if you wanted to and of course if you look up top you do have an overhead sunglass holder that's pretty much standard but you also have 
HomeLink controls for up to three different garage doors since I have the Ultimate here today. So love that because the alternative is that rattling garage door opener on the sun visor. So I am a huge fan of the HomeLink controls on this one. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display on the Tucson. Seven inch color touchscreen display coming with all trim levels, but the Ultimate. So the Ultimate that we have here today does come with an eight inch color touchscreen display. Ultimately, it's gonna include all the same information. It's just a different screen size simply. So you're not gonna be missing out on anything but an inch if you go with any of the other trim levels. So Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay coming standard. Ultimate trim level also gives you a factory navigation system, which in this day and age you really don't need because of Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Anyways, that'll give you navigation up on that screen anyway. So also you can check out your climate control information up there and of course your radio information and by the way when it comes to the sound system on the Tucson six speakers coming with the SE and value trims eight speaker infinity sound system coming with the sport trim level and up so I do believe you guys know what we have to do next let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this Tucson <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that sound system was plenty fine, plenty of bass. Really, if I were to have the Tucson, there would be absolutely no issues for me with that sound system. I can't speak for the six speaker one, of course, but the eight speaker Infinity one is definitely quite nice. But so the last thing on the tech display I wanted to mention to you guys is when you do, of course, put the Tucson in reverse, you will find a rear view camera, but it doesn't stop there. Limited and ultimate trim levels also give you that surround view monitor or 360 degree camera, letting you know what is all around you, bird's eye view essentially. So that is pretty cool. And as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, IIHS top safety pick. When you equip the Tucson with LED headlights, I always have to mention that. So it's a good start though. Front side, side curtain airbags come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks back there, tire pressure monitoring system. That's all pretty standard, but Tucson also gives you advanced standard safety features on all trims, including a driver attention warning system, lane keep assist, which is actually really good on Hyundai. Some of the other manufacturers don't do it as well as Hyundai does so I wanted to mention that for collision avoidance assist as well if you were to go with the value trim level and up that is going to add a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert that's always a popular one and the ultimate trim level that we have today is going to add adaptive cruise control with stop and go and so but then ultimately when it comes to my final thoughts of the 2021 Tucson great safety in this one great styling still in my opinion to this day i know the refreshed look is coming in the 2022 model year so the question i believe really becomes do you want to hold out for the 2022 model year and we don't know what it's going to look like at the time of this video or do you go with the 2021 and having said that typically the way it works is you're going to get a heck of a deal on the 2021 seeing as the next one is going to be completely remodeled but so if you like the 2021 look you might as well get it because you're going to get a heck of a deal before the 2022s come out as far as constructive criticism on this one goes i would have loved to have seen some ambient lighting i've always been a big fan a lot of manufacturers are doing that in a lot of their cars these days even hyundai does that on a lot of their vehicles just not the tucson right now the other thing is below average reliability according to consumer reports which which kind of surprises me because the majority of Hyundai vehicles are actually really good with reliability, including the Santa Fe, which has above average reliability, which I personally own. Part of the reason, I guess, why I went with that one and is a little bit bigger, but a little more money ultimately. But I was kind of surprised to see a below average reliability. I don't know why that is. Ultimately, it comes down to personal preference in the end, what you're into. And this is certainly a great pick with America's best warranty and free maintenance for three years, 36,000 miles. So it's certainly a very good pick when you consider all of that. But that is about it for this review, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. I'm being weird today. Stay gold. <laughs>